Michael Raymond. Uh, I titled my story, A Summer in La Palma Estates. It was the summer of 1997 at La Palma Estates. I was a skinny 11-year-old Mexican kid. I would act tough and get in trouble at school. One of the things I got in trouble for was throwing rocks. The assistant principal said if I could stay out of trouble for one week, I could have lunch with them and play with the Star Trek toys. <laughs> that week was long, but worth it. That's how I became a Trekkie. But at La Palma, there was no one to really keep me in check, except my mother, but she didn't have a kick-ass Star Trek collection, so I didn't really listen to her. <laughs> I hung out with Kevin, Derek, and Adam. They were the cool kids of La Palma Mobile Estates. These were the guys to hang out with. I wanted to be part of a gang. I would hear about TKO from friends in the trailer park. It was one of the most known gangs in my neighborhood. I would tag TKO everywhere, feeling like one of them. I never actually seen a gang or spoke to anyone who was in the gang. But I knew one day I would. <laughs> Kevin, Derek, Adam, and I were in junior TKO training camp. We didn't do nothing serious like harm people, and we didn't have a rival gang from another trailer park. We were just bored school kids whose parents weren't around or didn't give a shit about us. We would race bikes around the trailer park, play in a pool or the park. Kevin, who went to the same elementary school as me, was a great athlete. He played baseball, basketball, and football, and he was allowed to listen to gangster rap. <laughs> Derek was the oldest and tallest and fattest. He was a decent basketball player. I can't remember why I, don't, why I, I like Derek, but I do remember he had a sister that was hot. <laughs> Adam was the kid that always had a broken arm. My mom didn't like me hanging out with Kevin and Derek. They were a little too old for me and they listened to gangster rap. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to listen to gangster rap. My dad bought me Snoop Dogg's album, Doggy Style, on concept tape, and I would bump that bad boy loud. <laughs> he also bought me a Pittsburgh, a Pittsburgh Pirates hat. Then one day the tape disappeared. She didn't get me or my boys. But the four of us were it, the kids that stirred up trouble in La Palma. We were bad. One summer afternoon, Adam and I were sitting around in his yard that had, that had huge rocks. I came up with the idea to throw them over the other houses because I wanted to hear how it would sound hitting the tops of the houses. <laughs> it was the coolest sound ever. <laughs> like a cherry bomb blowing up. And we kept throwing them until we heard a rock hit a window. We fucked up. <laughs> we stopped, we sat back down and acted cool. Four people started searching the park for the perps, us. I don't know how they knew it was us. <laughs> One guy grabbed me by the arm and took me to my house and called my mom out and told her I was throwing rocks and busted the windshield of his car. My mom dragged me to that guy's house and we looked at what I had done. It was just a small dent. It looked like a pebble hit it, but the cops came anyways. When the cops talked to me one-on-one, -on -one, I began to cry and I pissed my pants. <laughs> La Palma Mobile Estates was full of characters. You had your hoarder that had a, an old dusted Cadillac covered with boxes sitting in his driveway. You had your crazy cat lady, you had your mechanic, the Mexican guy that everyone went to for help with their car, and the guy who fed cat food to the trailer park family of possums. And that's the trailer park. La Palma sat next to the Palm Avenue trolley station. My back window faced it. From my room, I could see mostly everything that happened at that station. I could catch the majestic warm sunset, the colorful fireworks popping off on the 4th of July and really late at night I could hear and feel the train pass by. I also saw and heard some messed up things. The Palm Avenue station was ghetto, run down, and shady. It was a place where transients and thugs hung out. Cholos and cholas would crowd around, waiting to catch a free ride on the trolley or deal drugs. 
During the day, it wasn't so bad, but at night, the trolley station came alive. In the middle of the night, I would hear the screams of people being jumped and begging for help. I especially remember hearing one person yell, get him, get him. I never got up to see what was actually happening. The sounds alone were haunting and violent. My skin would crawl when I heard the screaming sirens race down the street into the parking lot. Blue, red, and white lights would light up my room like a nightlight. When it was all over, I would be asleep. I would wake up the next day as if nothing happened. I was home when the liquor store across the street from the trolley was robbed. I didn't actually hear the robbery take place, but I could see the police cars surrounded the, the block and heard news, heard news and police helicopters fly around. I remember turning on the TV and being excited that my neighborhood was on the news. <laughs> Three people died. Yeah, that's not funny. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that summer I died of boredom. I went to the tiny park that was inside walls of La Palma, met up with the guys Kevin, Derek, and Adam, our usual hangout spot. We couldn't go to the pool because we didn't have our parents to watch us. There was a tall, yellowish, busted fiberglass slide with rusted stairs. You had to push yourself down or wear sweatpants to slide down to the bottom. Sometimes that didn't even work. When you slid down, you could hear your skin rubbing against the surface. It sounded like a squeegee wiping a dry window, and it burned. There was a giant swing set too, also rusted. I would swing hard and fast, and when I got as high as I could go, I would jump off and land on the flat concrete that took up most of the park. There was a basketball hoop that was missing the net. Why do all basketball hoops in the hood missing nets? It was early on in the afternoon, and Derek, Adam, Kevin, and I were shooting the shit in the park. Derek suggested we throw rocks at the trolley cops who were hanging out at the end of the parking lot. We called them trolley cops because we were too dumb to call them transit police. Plus, they were dicks. They think they're real cops, but we knew they were just ticket enforcers. No one took them serious. I said, Derek, that's a great idea, since they have some experience throwing rocks and know how fun it can be. <laughs> they all gathered some rocks and hid behind the giant concrete wall. They launched the rocks over the wall and climbed up the slide so I could keep a lookout, because that's what the homies are for. We got each other's backs. I lay flat on the slide and popped my head up to see what the trolley cops were doing. I popped my head up a second time and saw a flash from a camera. I then yelled, they're coming! And the hailstorm of rocks stopped. The trolley police made their approach toward us and we scattered like roaches. We all ran home. When I got inside, I ran straight to my room and looked at my window. I could see the trolley police race their cars through the parking lot. I then went to the front of my house and peeked out. And sure enough, the trolley police drove by. I was a little traumatized from the idea of getting caught and arrested. I didn't want to end up like the thugs I would see from my window. I never got caught. I also threw out my Pittsburgh Pirates hat because I was sure that the trolley police had taken a photo of me wearing it and were still looking for me. I didn't ride the trolley for years. I swore every trolley cop had a photo of me in their car or pocket <laughs> and were on the hunt for me. I never really spoke to any of those guys again. I would see them around from time to time, but we were changing and growing up and heading in different directions. I have no idea where those guys ended up. I ended up transferring to St. Charles Catholic School and then moving on to Marion Catholic School. I graduated and went to work for Coles. Don't work for Coles. In that time period, my family and I moved out of the hood and into a quieter and clean neighborhood in Chula Vista. I still ride the trolley looking over my shoulder, but now I wear a different hat. <laughs>